If you're financially challenged, then you know the holidays bring more stress than joy. There is a social obligation to spend what little money you have on an abundance of decorations to match the surrounding houses of your more well-off neighbors. If you fail in doing so, you risk being the holiday scrooge of the neighborhood, and you become the topic of every household's holiday gossip. I've always hated that it had to be this way. If you don't decorate one year, everyone becomes aware that you're having financial problems and comes up with their own gossipy conclusion as to why. Why can't we just celebrate in our own way? Why must there be a social obligation to spend hundreds of dollars on inflatables and animatronics for your front yard? Anyway, I have always managed to uphold my social status, no matter how tight money got. Even if I had to use the same decorations from the past few years, I just mix them with several new decorations and place them differently so that they appear new. Fortunately, this has always worked. However, my inflatables eventually couldn't be blown up, my animatronics couldn't be turned on without glitching, pretty much everything decided to break all at once, and I was left hopeless with not enough money to even replace one of them. This would be the year that I would be plagued as the neighborhood Scrooge, and be the center of holiday gossip. I tried my hardest not to care, but as more and more decorations around the neighborhood went up, I couldn't help but envy them all and feel pity for myself. Until one day, I had just gone home from work and performed my usual routine of stopping at the mailbox to grab my mail before going into the house. I received the usual things like bills and ads from local grocery stores regarding their sales. However, there was a piece of mail that I didn't recognize. I made my way back up the driveway and into the house where I placed all of my other mail on the kitchen counter except the mysterious piece of mail. It was a thick envelope, threatening to rip open at its flaps. The envelope was addressed to me, but there was no return address or stamp. That meant that it was not mailed at all, but rather someone dropped it off in my mailbox. I finally opened the envelope, and inside it contained a large stack of $100 bills. There was about $2,000 inside the envelope, Accompanying the money was also a note that read, A generous act is only a virtue if the receiver passes it on. The note was not signed. It only contained this one-sentence riddle. I was overjoyed by my gift from the anonymous saint, so I didn't bother to try to understand the riddle. I was already behind on decorating and needed to start shopping as soon as possible. I couldn't believe I would be able to decorate for the holidays after all. I budgeted to spend $1,000 each for Halloween and Christmas. Halloween was successful, and many of the trick-or-treaters and neighbors complimented my new decor. After Halloween, I took down the scarier items and kept up the fall decor for Thanksgiving. Then came Christmas. My house was beautifully decorated like a home in a Hallmark Christmas movie. Again, I received many compliments on my new decorations, and the praise felt... Great. Finally, it was Christmas Eve. There was a strong snowstorm that swept across the little town I call home, so I decided to stay home and spend Christmas Eve by myself, because I planned to visit my family at my parents' house Christmas morning. The storm didn't frighten me at all. It added to the Christmas vibe, with my burning fireplace and scary Christmas movie. I was all cuddled up on my couch with a blanket watching the movie, when suddenly... There was a knock on my door. It seemed odd that anyone would be out in such an intense snowstorm, so I figured the noise was a tree banging against my house. However, the knocking continued and grew rapid and louder. I eventually got up from my couch and walked to the door where I attempted to check the peephole. The snow was so bad that I couldn't see clearly through it. I then went over to the window to peek at the porch, but the view from the window too was obstructed by the snow. The banging continued, and I had no choice but to open the door to see who or what it was. After opening the door, I saw an older man, possibly in his late sixties, bundled up in ragged clothes covered in snow. 
he proceeded to speak in a shaky, cold voice that he was homeless and seeking shelter. Considering that I am a female who lives alone, my immediate reaction wasn't to extend the welcome mat to this stranger. I informed him that the local high school offers shelter for families and people in need, and he could go there. However, he said that he was exhausted and cold and would never make the long trek to the high school from my house. I felt bad for what I did next, but I told him to try one of my other neighbors, because I couldn't help him, and I shut my door. I returned to my couch and continued watching the rest of my movie, without a second thought, about my unwanted visitor. I knew one of my neighbors would help him, so I didn't bother to worry about what would become of him. Then suddenly, all the lights and power in my house went out. I assumed the storm was the cause, or the overabundance of electricity being used throughout the neighborhood by decorations. So I began walking around my home, lighting as many candles as I could find. I decided to enjoy the new vibe of my home, as it was engulfed in darkness, with only the flicker of a few flames. I returned to the comfort of my couch, and rewrapped myself in my pumpkin-colored knit blanket. I grabbed the thriller book that I had been on and off reading from my coffee table, and balanced a candle on the armrest of my couch to illuminate the pages, just enough for me to make out the words. I was hyper-focused on the thrilling story, when I was suddenly startled by a familiar pounding on my front door. My heart began jumping around in my ears, as I safely placed the candle and book back on the coffee table, and made my way to the front door. I remembered that checking the peephole and window would be of no use, so I reluctantly opened the front door. Standing before me was the old man again, but now his skin was a grayish blue and he didn't utter any words. Only his eyes could communicate with me as they pleaded with me to help. At that moment, I suddenly remembered the riddle on the note I'd received a few months ago. A generous act is only a virtue, if the receiver passes it on. I knew what I had to do. I ushered the old man inside my home, and guided him to sit down on the floor in front of the cozy burning fireplace. I told him to remove his exterior layers that were wet from the snow, and I knelt down behind him and wrapped a blanket around his shoulders. He managed to utter a shaky thank you, but I didn't respond to his gratitude because I hadn't really helped him yet. I remained and knelt behind him, examining his state. His skin was still lacking color, and he hadn't yet stopped shaking. I leaned over and grabbed the string of Christmas lights I had draped on the coffee table. I then swiftly, and quickly, wrapped the lights around the old man's neck. He couldn't really struggle in his current condition, so helping him was fairly easy. Once I was sure he was gone, I dragged his body out to the forest behind my backyard, where it would become the Christmas dinner of wild animals. The poor old man would no longer have to suffer, and I had passed on the generous act that was bestowed upon me. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs>